The Way We Were. That's a Barbara Streisand song. Nancy and I were talking about that song from years ago and the yeah. movie, The Way We Were. No, that's the yeah, classic. Robert Redford. And I kind of remember him. I'm not that yeah, old. Well, no, I know you're just, a, you're just a child. <laughs> Come on. Kind of. Child at heart. Child at heart. Yeah, and you know, that's, that, that, that's what happens. Uh, a lot of people who, because uh, I make fun of Dylan sometimes because he's only 24. And uh, I got socks older than him. <laughs> I Come in a little closer. Okay, okay. Okay, this is Megan McDrew. McDrew. Mm -hmm. And Megan and I have been trying to get her together to be on this show for quite a while, but we made it tonight. Such an honor. Thank Transformative you. Justice Center. And when I saw her card and I heard what she was doing, it blew my mind because it is so different then you would normally hear people talk about what she does. Mm -hmm. So, Megan, start at the beginning and tell me, number one, how you put this all together and how you've made it happen and how you bring in people from the outside and take them to prison. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for having me on your I'm show. So it's an honor. I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, I started the Transformative Justice Center about two years ago in order to offer the community a chance to go into prison. So we go to CTF Soledad Prison every Monday from 4 to 6. 4 to uh, 6 in the afternoon. 4 to 6 in the afternoon. Okay. It's a year-round program every eight weeks. So I ask people to commit to the eight-week cycle. Um, we sit in circles we call families and use a talking piece, a little heart squeezy thing, um, kind of like a stress ball. Stress ball. And we follow various themes that I've outlined over the course of eight weeks. So now, we, how many people are you taking so into the So we try to bring prison? in about 30 people. 30? So we're starting, this fall we're starting October 7th. I already have 28 people, so I've cut, kind of cut it off now. But if anybody wants to join, we'll be going again in winter. We'll be going again in spring. We go so year round. So how many times a year do you do this? Uh, four. Four times a year. Four so times a year, but then I offer extra things in between at, at the Soledad Prison. Um, art workshops, um, stress workshops. So I'm always bringing volunteers into prison. Um, and people, and when I heard that, mm -hmm. you do what? You take people like me yeah, yeah. into Soledad Prison? Mm -hmm. And what am I going to do while I'm there? Come on. Well, it's only two hours, so you go in, we shake hands with the men. So I bring in about 30 volunteers. I'm not sure what camera to look at. It would be that one. Uh, the middle one. You can look at any Anyone. one of them. Okay. Dylan, um, Dylan will sorry. put we, the right one on you. Okay. We bring in about 30 volunteers from the outside. They range from college students, as I'm a um, retired UC Santa Cruz professor, as well as Hartnell College instructor. Um, and then we sit with around 70 to 80 incarcerated men. 70 um, to 80 incarcerated men. Now, are mm -hmm. they different whenever you have these sessions, or are they the same? They're the same over the course of the eight weeks, and then we have a no, new 70 to 80 men. Okay. There's around 5,000 men at the prison. Okay. So and how we're, do we're you, trying... how do you find the 70 that you want to um, bring into the, these sessions? The prison signs them up. And there, we have a wait list. Almost everyone in prison wants to be in the they program. They all want to be in they the program. They all want to be in the program. So now they come into the room. You said you do it in a circle? Well, they come in. We use the gym. They come into the, the big gym space. Um, there's a lecture style of seating. And we always start with breath work. So we start with some kind of mindfulness, some sort of grounding, um, which there's around five to ten minutes. And you do that? Yeah, You're, I lead you, that. You I lead, lead that. that. I lead the whole thing. Okay. And then... Um, and then I lecture for about 10 minutes on the theme of the night. And that does vary from understanding what empathy means, what, a, what transformative justice means. Um, that's the first week. We get into conflict. How do we manage conflict? How do we mediate conflict in our life? Where does anger come from? What are the root causes of anger? We get into understanding relationship patterns. So what do you want to know from your life? that you want to replicate as far as loving mentoring relationships and what relationships would you never want to have again wow. that are abusive addictive um, neglectful uh, we move into trauma is a huge thing i mean they say that um, prisoners are the most traumatized people in society uh, so they come into prison with a 
so much trauma from their childhood, from their teenage years, from their adolescence, from their adult years, given whatever's going on in their life, and they commit a crime. So our understanding as far as when it comes to the incarcerated population is that hurt people hurt people, and healed people heal people. Say that one more time because that makes so much sense, Megan. Hurt people hurt people. And hurt people hurt people. Because they're just running off this mechanism of survival and of hurt and of normalization of violence. Um, they're almost numb to their own feelings of, of worth. And so they, they act out in ways that feels normal and natural to them, which is usually a form of violence. And so what we found with the men in prison, and we do this in the women's prison too, um, is that they've all come in with a, a mountain load, a, a volcano load of pain. It's a beautiful way and, to and describe that they, it. And that they've really, that they, then they threw onto somebody else or a population of people. Um, and now they're in prison, which is one of the most traumatizing environments you can live in. It's dark. It's scary. There's... Um, so it's a difficult fun. place to it's be. A, it's a really difficult place to be. They live in cages the size of a bathroom. They're um, not given any sort of, well, very little resources to healing, to justice, to making amends with their victims, um, and also understanding that they were victims themselves. So where's that sort of connection? Um, so what we do in Empathy in Action is we go in and we try to understand their story. We, we get to know them very deeply. And we see them as beautiful human beings worthy of positive change. And uh, every single every single man I've had in the program has never failed me, as far as committing to a life of non-harm. You are a remarkable woman to have taken this on to do this. What possessed you to get into this? line of work i guess it's work isn't it work for yeah, you? yeah yeah it's work it's work every monday it's work and then the rest of the time so my center i just opened is downtown monterey 439 okay. tyler street so tell me what's there on tyler street what are you what doing will on tyler be there street? soon we're just building it out there's okay. going to be a prison cell that people can go in and have an immersive experience of what it's like to be in that very small box with you know the you're going to do that we're in, doing that in, in my your, center. In mm -hmm. your center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing so that in I the center. So I could go in there and go you into this. You can lay this. in a prison cell. You can hear the prison sounds. You'll see um, images of, of kind of like almost a live experience of being in prison with people wow. walking around. Wow. Um, we have videos playing all day of about 350 incarcerated people talking about their lives, talking about what it's like to be incarcerated, what led to the incarceration. So you, it's kind of, that the biggest part of the center is the media room where you're going to be able to just sit on the couch, sit on a bar stool, watch the videos. Where did you get this um, idea to do this? How did well, that I happen? Just, um, our, my belief, our belief as part of my team and people that volunteer with me is that People that are incarcerated are, are part of our community. And even though they've done bad things, they've done some horrific things, they've, they've victimized people. But as I already talked about, they've been victimized too. And at some point or another, we didn't recognize that. Oh. They say that people that commit these types of crime, they, they forget. So what led me to the work is that I'm, I'm a yogi. I, I teach yoga in the prison too. But my, my core belief is that we're all good, good you know, at, at our core, upon birth. We're innocent, we're pure, we, we want to be loved, something we want happened. to love, but something happened. Something happened. Something happened and nobody helped you. Yeah. And, and, and nobody helped you again and again and again and again. And you begin to forget that you are actually a good person and you start to get into really negative tendencies and start to become a violent, a violent person. So what we do in Empathy in Action is we go in and we remind the men and they remind us that they're good people. They're they're beautiful Something human beings. Something happened along Something the way. Something happened along the way, and they got broken. Yeah. And so, you know, I have this quote I wanted to share. It. Um, Please. It is an absolute human certainty that no one can know his own beauty or per or perceive a sense of his own worth until it has been reflected back to him in the mirror of another loving, caring human being. So one man said, "It would have been nice to been loved as a child, as I am in empathy and action." Wow. So to That's to just go in and give these guys the connection they need, the healing they need, we're we're trying to make society a safer place for everybody. We're not. There's accountability there. There's 
a need for them to say like I I did a crime and I feel bad I I I I I feel awful about it but I'm on the path of of healing. So you take a guy like me mm -hmm. into this circle, and there are these prisoners. How many in the group usually? Mm, Seventy to eighty. Seventy to eighty, and there's thirty of uh, us so volunteers. To speak, volunteers. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And when they're in there and you were conducting this seminar, I guess it would be a seminar. Oh, yeah, I never got into the last part. Yeah, it's a... What happens during this time that mm -hmm. I would be spending with the 70 prisoners? What goes Only on? Only two hours a week. It's two not hours a lot. A week. It's okay. not a lot. So what, do we, um, what so comes after, out of this? After I lecture for about 10 minutes on the topic of the night, which could be, as I said, conflict, relationship patterns, trauma, societal inequities. We talk a lot about gender. We get into anger management, PTSD, um, hierarchy of needs and privilege. Uh, we get into circles we call families. Families. Okay. Families. And so, and they really do begin to feel like a family over the course of the eight weeks. Um, we use the heart talking piece I talked about, and I, I come up with the prompts with my team. And you just pass around the talking piece. Everybody answers whatever prompts they feel comfortable responding to, um, depending on the theme of the night. So it could be something related to like, like share one of your greatest joys in life. Wow. Share share a relationship that broke your heart. Share about a time in your life that you felt abandoned. Um, oh, I don't know. Topics. Really deep. Really deep. Deep stuff here. I mean, we we get to the point where people are just like leaning in and and really I mean, I've had people in my program say they've never felt so connected to anybody in their life than they do to the incarcerated population. Amazing. There's no cell phones. There's no TV. There's no distraction. We're just really... How long is the session? Two hours. Two hours. Every Monday, 46. 120 so it's, minutes. It's not a lot, but after about an hour and a half, we come back together. We do what's called Sparks from the Fire, where I ask volunteers to come up, or incarcerated men. We call them Brothers in Blue to come up and share anything that was particularly transformative. So we kind of have a, a group bonding. Um, and then we always end with a little bit more mindfulness, like a, a prayer of gratitude for the space. You know, we're really focused on transforming the prison space into a house of healing. Wow. Rather than a palace of pain, which it has been notoriously known for. And then all the volunteers line up on a white line in the gym and we shake hands with all of the men. Wow. How that great. takes around 10 minutes. And these guys have tears coming out of their eyes. They're so gracious. Like how you, 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 you are amazing. Number one to even have come up with this idea. Did you get this idea from another person somewhere? Well, the prison program, yes. The, the transformative justice center I came up with on my own as a vehicle for, um, bringing people in Monterey County or in any anywhere to come into the center and learn about incarcerated lives. So my center at 439 Tyler Street is really a center for incarcerated voices, which nobody has done, I don't think, in the whole world to, I don't to, honor, to honor prisoners, no. right? Like God that's a bless you. crazy God thing. Bless you but I did take doing. over the Empathy in Action program was originally called Exercise in Empathy run by a couple at Palma High School. And that was based on... Um, bringing in only boys from Palma High and talking with the men about classical literature. So they were doing Shakespeare and Steinbeck and things like that. And I started learning from them and, and taking part of their program as I was also bringing students in from Santa Cruz and Hartnell. And when they, the, the program dissolved for various reasons, um, I ended up picking it up and changing it more into an academic kind of a, a higher level academic program given my I'm a sociology instructor as mentioned and um, created an eight-week program year-round and now I bring anybody in from the pub public so it doesn't just have to be students. How long did it take you to work with the prison system to get Soledad to let you come in and do this? How, how difficult was that? They were really they were really great about it. So even right now, the warden um, is amazing. He's doing what they call a California model, so his real focus is on rehabil rehabilitation. Um, I don't think you can change much in the prison system if you don't change the housing, yeah. where they live in their cells, and they're forced to share a very small space with another individual. Um, that's... That's going to be the biggest lift, the architecture, but at least to have the programs, to have yoga, to have... To do what you're doing. People come and in. And the interaction with... And I want to be... You should with, join. I want to... Deb, I would love to have you. Absolutely. I oh, want yay, to be part great. of it. 
um, because I'm going to learn a lot. You learn a lot. I'm going to learn a lot. You learn by a lot. doing it. Um, so, if I'm involved, what's the takeaway? The people that have been involved in this, what's the takeaway to them? Uh, this is a normal, everyday human being doing their business on the outside. What's well, the takeaway for them? How do they come away from this? Well, you asked me. You 120 asked me. One hundred and twenty minutes. You asked me why I do the work or why I got involved, and I, um, when I was back in college twenty years ago or so, I started thinking about like, what's the meaning of life? You know, what is the meaning of life? Why, why do we even exist? And and I realized that the meaning of life is is to give life meaning, and for me, to give life meaning is to be of service. So being of service going inside and bonding and connecting and healing with one of the most oppressed, marginalized, dehumanized populations in the entire world is the most connecting, impactful, powerful experience I think I could offer people in their lives. So if you want to grow in your soul, if you want to feel like you're making an impact, because it's all about like getting close to a situation or a problem or a population you care about. It could be working with wounded animals or wounded warriors yeah, or yeah. with veterans. I mean, there's no end goal. The, the goal is to connect. Connection. Connection. Yeah. And, and that's really the most impactful thing you can get out of life. And to connect with people that feel so unconnectable. They feel so invisible. They feel so dead. And to when be able this, to ride them. When this happens... Folks from the outside, these gentlemen on the inside, mm -hmm. is there love exchanged? Can you feel the love in that room happen? It's amazing. You can you can really feel it. Like my one of my partner, my staff member says, it's like free group therapy. Like you feel this immense healing. It's it's amazing because every nobody's nobody's afraid to open up. They know we're here for 2 hours, one day a week for 8 weeks. Like I either dive in and get into my stuff and start swimming up that river of pain and shame and regret and just come to the the lightness of who I know I am or I'm just going to be wasting my time. And so I have to tell you, I have done 97 shows. Mhm. Mm you are amazing. Oh, thank you. You really are. For what you're doing. And it's, I want to be part of it. I'd love to have you join. I you can even start October it. 7th. I'll make a little space for you. I will go free. put it on my calendar, Okay. Megan. It's um this is this it's, is amazing. It's one of the most impactful experiences of people's life. And I would say that um I mean, I have testimonials here a, a, a lot, but people sign up again and again and again. So even after 8 weeks, they're like, I have to go back. Yeah. Because I just I can see why we don't we don't get that depth in society anymore. No. We don't get that connection. We don't get those really needed conversations. And this interview with you tonight, of all of the interviews, and I've done a lot of them, three per show, ninety-seven shows. That's amazing. You are the most meaningful interview. Thank you. That I've done. You really touched well, me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's um, it's just it's important. It's an important to care about things outside of ourselves. Yeah. And 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 you don't have to do it. I mean, I do I do the work too because I need healing. I get something out of it, but it's not fully altruistic. But it is, it is knowing the second I go into prison, these guys are just like, like that. We're we're vital to their survival and we're vital to their healing and it's our responsibility because at some point their teachers failed them their parents the CPS the hospital yeah you know they these child these children fell through the cracks and they're not bad people they're really yeah. not they're they're actually really amazing and 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 fun and funny and strong and they have so much wisdom and and they're just disappeared and it's not okay it's like not okay no. to do that to a human being even if they done a malicious a malicious act because i've done things i regret yeah. i've done things that i feel horrible about i don't have a a, a past that's that's you know doesn't have any harm or, or or regret or guilt so we kind of move to a space of forgiveness and and of kind of restoring and reminding them that 
when you were 10 or you were 8 or you were 7, you were a really beautiful human being that deserved love and you didn't get it. Something happened. Something happened. Yeah. So instead of asking, what did you do and why are you here and how can we punish you? We ask, what happened to you and how can we heal you? Yeah. Because we care about you. Yeah. That's really love. where we go in. Yeah, we love. love. My, my quote I always say is lack, love or lack thereof is the reason for everything. Say that one more time. Love or lack thereof is the reason for everything. So I feel like the men and women that end up incarcerated, they really lacked love. Yeah, and that's what happened. And that's what happened. That's and what happened. And you, again, I'm going to say it one more time, are amazing to make this into what it is. Yeah. You have done something absolutely marvelous. Thank you. You really have. I and think I'm going to be part of it. Yeah, and that would be so wonderful. I have I, I have a couple wait. cops in the program in October. I we can't have all wait. we have. Yeah, thank you. Well, well let me thank know. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, oh, that was don't really go away because I'm coming really out moving. there okay. and giving you all my information so I can be there on oh. October the seventh. You guys are great. Thank you so much for having me, and thank I can't wait to have you part of the See, program. See, I knew when I heard what she was doing. I knew I had to have her here. I'm happy to come back. And we're going to have you back. Okay. Because people need to hear about this. Absolutely. Yep, there's the website. Empathy yeah. in Action. Mm-hmm. Transformativejusticecenter.org. That's the... Megan way. McDrew. Megan M-C-D-R-E-W. Mm-hmm. If they want to find you, they can go to the website. They'll find me all over the place. Get out more information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stay where you are. We're going to go back now and put on this young lady that I discovered back last Saturday night. Awesome. Digging for music. Her name is Lucy Thomas, and she's absolutely amazing. Beautiful in the voice. Music. Isn't she? Mm-hmm. Just yeah, Just a gorgeous, amazing. gorgeous voice and great music. Mm-hmm. You're watching Monterey on tonight. I'm Gary Morris. That's Megan Madru, one of a kind. She is one Same of a kind. Same as you. <laughs> thank anyway, you, everybody. Have a great thank night. Thank you for being here. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, back to more Lucy Thomas.